All right, back again. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of TLG Reacts. We are doing Bethesda E3 2019. If you missed our previous two, we did Microsoft and EA already. Make sure to check those out. Also, don't forget to play our PlayStation Plus games, which are Borderlands The Handsome Collection and Sonic Mania, offered for free on PlayStation Plus. Come back at the end of the month and hear what we have to say about those games. And our game of the month, picked by Chris, is Path of Exile. Play that. It's free on everything. Come back at the end of the month and hear what we have to say about that as well. We uh, have a Discord. Link down below. Feel free to come in, chat with us anytime. And we have an iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast uh platforms available for audio only versions of this so <clears throat> yeah we're starting with uh bethesda now the second of three shows today i have to do devolver as well i imagine that will be a lot shorter than this one though so uh got a long night ahead of me so i'm gonna go ahead and get this started and here we go wub 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 How's the sound over there, Psycho? Now, well, gotta show off the employees. Let me know if I have to make any audio adjustments sooner than later. Without you, there is no game. There's no one to play it. No one to interact with it. I agree. The uh, countdown was super annoying. And we appreciate that. And through all of it, you're always there with us. And you are definitely not afraid to tell us how you feel. Your feedback sometimes challenges us, but it forces us to be always challenging ourselves. You empathize with us as developers and with each other as a community. It's really beautiful. So beautiful. I'm Dinga Bakaba, and I used to take a week off every time a Bethesda game came out. My name is Mark Diaz, and when I was eight years old, I used to sneak over to my buddy's house to play Doom. I'm Rush Lambert. Daggerfall was one of the very first games that got me into the Elder Scrolls world. I'm Dana Christo. That's an old one. I started out as a 16-year-old gamer who just wanted to bring joy to others through video games. And now I'm game director at Arkane Studios. Now I'm a game programmer at id Software. Now I get to be a part of building that world as the creative director on Elder Scrolls Online. Now I'm a UI programmer at Bethesda Game Studios, and it's everything I could have dreamed of. I see you. I see you. I see you. We see you. Because we are you. <laughs> Together. 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 We are all. 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 I don't know about that. I am kind of curious what they're going to even talk about because the two big titles that they had last year, pretty positive they said they weren't going to talk about them. So we'll see. Besides id Software games, I mean, I am definitely expecting to see those. What are you doing in the audience, Pete? Who 
We don't speak of the failures, just the success. I mean, most businesses will do that, so yeah. Feel all right. How are you? Thank you guys for being here. Thank everyone watching around the world to tuning in to watch our fifth annual E3 showcase. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a night dedicated to those who love games, who love the incredible entertainment that games provide. This past year, you fought demons on Mars and Nazis in America. You were assassins in the Empire. Adventurers in Tamriel and survivors. A lot of us. And survivors. Hopefully, didn't guys didn't get that sneeze. One seat wasn't sold, so Pete bought it and said it was a packed house. You think he actually bought it? You choose to play, and that's the key. You take the worlds that we create and you make them yours. You share your experiences with other players, with friends, and with family, with our games. You've built large global communities that truly Full matter. house, baby. This year, we want to give special recognition to the extraordinary Bethesda community. As you showed, as you saw in our opening video, you mean everything to us. I've almost been at this company for 20 years. And when I first started... <clears throat> Damage control. Oh, neck muscles. When I first started, one of my first responsibilities was moderating the community forums, chatting with you and keeping you up to date on our games. It was a great way to start my career at Bethesda because it was the perfect reminder of why we do what we do. And like so many others at Bethesda, I've spent a lot of time with you at events around the world. I've enjoyed meeting so many of you and getting your thoughts and feedback. So tonight, Man, I would not want that job. The show to hear directly community from manager? In the That'd be community. rough. We are thrilled tonight to show our fans the lineup of great games we've been creating just for you, including the premiere of some exciting new games, and we'll go deep on Doom Eternal. So deep. So, if you're ready, let's kick it off and to mm -hmm, get an update mm -hmm. from our friends at one of the most celebrated development studios in the world, Bethesda Game Studios. Please welcome studio head and my good friend, Todd Howard. <clears throat> this guy. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see everybody. We have had an incredibly exciting year at Bethesda Game Studios. Given some of that excitement, impressed you're still here. <laughs> Actually, over the last year, we've had over 60 million players in our games, our most ever. And it's all of you. Hopefully you're not including blades in that. Looking like he just got off the set of a 90s movie. He lives in the 90s. What they are. Take Fallout 76. <laughs> are people cheering for that? A type of game we'd never done before. Had a lot of difficulties at launch. And we got a lot of well deserved criticism. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Understatement. <clears throat> but the team kept working on it. And you kept playing it. And through all of that, something amazing has happened. It's thanks to all of you. This game has one of the best online communities we've ever seen. We made a post-apocalyptic survival game where you can do whatever you want, and everybody's nice to each other. They don't go on killing griefing sprees. They leave food and water for the newbies and wave to each other. I don't know about you. This should give us all hope for humanity when the apocalypse does come. Oh, hi. Funny how you go to, to Twitch. To you. And we have a lot more in store this year for Fallout 76. But first, our latest game, The Elder Scrolls Blades, is an early access. And thanks to all of you... I played that, by the way. Game ...our second straight number one mobile game after Fallout Shelter. Absolutely incredible. 
someone has to be here. Yeah. He's gotta be lonely over there though. I mean Psycho's over on YouTube. Let me introduce project leader Craig Lafferty and art director Matt Carafano. It's great to be here at thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. I like the quiet. <clears throat> yeah, me too. Sometimes. For 20 years, it's been incredible to bring this world to your phones in an all-new way. We still love those classic dungeon crawlers. <sighs> you know, I get really confused on why, besides money, gave game devs, you know, or the advertisers for them, get up on stage and think we're going to get excited for phone games. I just started, so no, they haven't shown anything exciting yet. Shiny head. Uh, oh, they're over there. They're not close enough. I can't. I can't see the shine. Sounds like a theme to me. Uh, they are going to show Doom Eternal later, which will be cool. And then they supposedly have some new stuff to show, so we'll see. For this fall, that will feature PvP, your own guilds, and visiting your friends' towns. But most exciting this year, we're also bringing Blades to an all-new platform, Switchblades. Cool-ish. I don't think the game's very fun, so it doesn't work for me, but another thing for people to play on Switch. <laughs> Skyrim on your phones. Yeah, I mean, if you're like, like, so into like every Elder Scrolls game, it, it's just more Elder Scrolls for you, right? <clears throat> I, I'm just, I'm kind of burnt out, so. And playing that, I. <clears throat> hard for me to get into mobile games, uh, with the exception, obviously, you guys know personally. I play a lot of Brave Exvius, but that's about it. Yes, it's still free. <laughs> Blades is the perfect fit for the Switch. You can play on the go, on your TV, and I think that's a running joke. But best of all, it's cross play and cross progression with the mobile version. So you can So you can start tonight on mobile. Don't let them interrupt you. Keep talking. And it's playable here at E3 in our booth and Nintendo's. <laughs> and for those of you playing on mobile, we also have some special rewards for both our Apple and Google players this week. So download tonight and let us know what you think. Thanks again. <laughs> now, let me introduce Jeff and Tom to tell you what's coming to Fallout 76. They got loud ass people, I'll give them that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Project Leader Jeff Gardner, and I'm co studio director Tom Mustaine. On behalf of our mature studios, we want to thank the millions of you who have played with us, stuck with us. And help shape the world of Fallout 76. Absolutely. It's incredible what the game has become. Your English you is great. How much Keep it up. This year's updates so far from camp building, legendary weapons, player vending, and of course, the dreaded Sheep Squatch. <laughs> We've also been working on our biggest update yet. Before? It's called <laughs> Wastelanders. And it will fundamentally no, no, no. The game. armature. I like that better. It's been some time since Vault 76 opened its door. Has it? And we all discovered that Appalachia isn't quite what it used to be. I are winning to English. A lot of things. Overcame you just a lot type and hit enter before I don't think checking. Any of us expected for people. Are you from that vault? Can you help us? We've traveled pretty far. <laughs> Heard there's hope here. I, I don't know how to answer that, Psycho. Sorry. Fighting back. I technically could next this, but you know. 
that would defeat the purpose of me watching the whole conference. So. We've been everywhere and seen everything. And the one thing we've learned is this. You've got to claim the wasteland before it claims you. The question is, are you with us or with them? Human NPCs return? Did they get taken out? That's right. That's right. Human NPCs are coming to Fallout 76. Could talk about Earth and Red being in FBI. Yeah, I saw that. Um... I, mean, I don't know how to talk about that other than Aerith is supposed to be like top healer for a while, I think. <laughs> this is a long term story we're telling. Year one was about the vault doors opening and all of you settling the wasteland. Year two is about people coming back to reclaim it. Like previous Fallout games, these characters have their own stories and goals. It's up to you to choose how to interact with them and live with those consequences. The Wastelanders update is coming this fall and will be free for all Fallout 76 players. Fucking better be. And in the spirit of free, we're doing something special just for E3. Fallout 76 is going to have a free trial for everyone starting tomorrow. <laughs> There's your free drugs, kids. That's right. Hope it's, you enjoy them. <clears throat> that's right. It's the perfect time to see what Fallout 76. Hey, you get a plastic bag this time. We can't wait to welcome all of you. And because so many of you are going to be joining us, we thought we'd also give you a sneak peek this week at an all new game mode. Check it out. Check it out. Sandwich bags. Oh, they would sell like crazy, I'm sure. Is this their way of doing a battle royal? Is that what they're doing here? Yep. Yeah, yeah it does. I mean, honestly, you can't blame any company for trying to hop on, on that bandwagon. It's super popular, and they are in the business to make money. You're right, you can. <clears throat> I just don't agree with you. Language, little guy. Battle Royale, born from the Fallout universe, from power armor to perk cards, from camp building to contending with wasteland creatures, and of course, my my personal favorite, nukes. It's a great free addition to an already huge game. We love playing it, and we think you will too. <laughs> Man, he said a bad word. So check out the sneak peek and let us know what you think. Remember. All of Fallout 76, including Nuclear Winter, is free to try this week on all platforms. Mm-hmm. 
So jump in tomorrow. We can't wait to see you. <laughs> Fuck yeah, boys. We did it. We put a battle royal in Fallout 76. <sighs> that ain't it, man. That ain't it. Everything we've talked about that's coming this year is free. We get to represent hundreds of passionate developers across four We're just throwing that fucking Skyrim money around. On multiple projects. Yes, we're still hard at work on our next gen RPG Starfield. And of course, Elder Scrolls 6. We know how precious these game worlds are to all of you, and they are to us. We know the time you spend in them is important. Keep telling us what you love, what you'd like to see us do better. New thank engine. You again, everybody here for your support, but really even more so, I want to thank everybody for believing in us. Thank you. You had a customer buy something and you gave him crap for it? Please That's not good. So self-righteous. I'd like to start by greeting my team in Tokyo. It's Monday morning there, but they are watching. Mina Hoyzemas. Kyo Majimini Ario. Tonight, I am excited to announce the next game from Tango. Ghost. Why, uh, Tokyo? <laughs> I l we're cheering about stuff that isn't being shown. <clears throat> it is an action adventure game in which you will fight paranormal enemy and the great city of supernatural evil. I think you'll love it. Even in Japanese, he has an odd accent. Hey, you know. Curious creative director at Tango, Ikumi Nakamura. Yay! Wow! 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 <laughs> wow! So many people. Wow! Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> <laughs> um, such a such a big stage makes me nervous. I'll do my yeah, best to speak in English. <laughs> that was a sweet jacket, though. <laughs> uh, we are making a new kind of action adventure game. It's spooky. It's spooky. Uh oh. Calm down, Psycho. People are vanishing in Tokyo. You must find out why. You will encounter conspiracy and the occult. You have to you have to explore the world, face challenges to uncover the truth and save humanity. In the game, you will meet spirits, some dangerous, some peaceful. Hey, take the keyboard away from both of you. And survivors that each have their stories. You will need to ask yourself. It is normal or paranormal? I ask myself this question every time I go to the office. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> She's not kidding. We are very excited. Her co-workers are very spoopy. Oh, is this it? Be 
confiscating my phone, not a keyboard. I'm not confiscating anything. Is this War of the Worlds? <laughs> Clearly under duress. Yeah, but you know, it might have been her first. She said it was the first time on a, or at least that it was a big stage and she was uncomfortable, but she did a good job for being in that position, so. Got a cool theme going here. That's awesome looking. Holy crap. Ooh, I am loving the style. Hopefully everyone's undies were clean before they disappeared. <laughs> it's quite the concern. So the theme is is neat. I uh, be interested to see like actual game uh, play aspects of it. But yeah, that's that's actually kind of interesting. So Japanese Ghostbusters. When I'm not playing Bethesda games, I work as a mechanical engineer. I work in a hospital. I used to work with kids. Uh, I'm an electrician. I'm an event planner. In real life, I'm a system. Fluff. For a private school for children with autism. I'm trying to be an artist. Very, very interesting. Like yeah, I uh, actually <coughs> was being a little bit of uh, dismissive before this started, but uh, I'm glad they made that attitude uh, change. Because it does look neat now, so wouldn't want to be a Ghostbuster in Japan. Too many yokai. It does look interesting, actually. Yeah, no, I, I they did a really good job um, making that video. Anyways, a lot of the transitions were super creative, and then seeing the aesthetic and the style and the the tone they were going for. It's pretty cool. So, hopefully it's actually like a cool game. Oh, I want to go there. And then you could go there, which was wild. Go out into the world, go in any direction that you want to go. Are we still doing this? The weirdness and the alienness of it. I played Oblivion. I tell you, it probably saved my life. It was one of my first experiences with a fantasy world that was that immersive. Love the dragons, scatter the dragons. You can take down a dragon, you can definitely take down any illness. Don't ever stop adding dragons to your game. Add dragons to Fallout. Add dragons to Rage. Add dragons to everything. I'm gonna be that Mecha, dick Mecha, who's Mecha, who's Mecha. getting impatient because they're Mecha. having people, you know, say positive messages about this stuff because they were going through something and <clears throat> yeah, I'll just shut up. <laughs> Cycle bringing in the FFBE again. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I just want to. I just want to shout out to our friend Greg there, the one in the video that really loves dragons. I'm happy to say, Greg, the Elder Scrolls Online. It's a game I probably should revisit. I played this before or right at release and the game was a bit of a mess at the time but i know they have addressed a lot of that um but i'm pretty sure it's one of the top mmos right now positive fluff bores me fluff in general bores me i hear you wow watching you play the game streaming telling stories hearing your feedback we understand that you are the most important part of the world of Tamriel. This is also on console, right? Thank you. I know it's on PC, it's where I played it originally, but I'm pretty sure this plays on console as well. The past year has been a huge success for ESO. More Game of the Year awards, millions more players have joined. Yeah! 
So many, in fact, that we recently... So yeah, so it's considered one of the big four. Yeah, I kind of figured it was one of the top ones. I, he I hear, because it sells content coming out for it, Final Fantasy XIV, um, even though, you know, people are upset with WoW. I know WoW's still up there. And then, I, oh, Guild Wars 2, I think, is the other one. <clears throat> if I'm wrong, correct me. I'm pretty sure that's it, though. Is it same servers on console, though? I would, I would assume so. If you haven't played it yet, Elsewhere is the perfect starting point for new players. Yeah! When we announced Season of the Dragon, we kicked it off by showing you a video about how dragons were unleashed on Elsewhere. And we ended with a cliffhanger. Now, I'm really excited to show you what happens next. Check out the world... Check it. Isn't the team that made this also the team that made uh, Dark Age Camelot, or am I mistaken on that? Zenimax. Publisher. I've ignored the game for so long, I don't know anything about it anymore. Flying puppies! Where's Mythic made Dark Age? They make this though. Or am I just way off? I don't even know if that company's all around. Yeah, I remember they made Warhammer online. No crossplay for ESO since Sony isn't open, but people are holding out for crossplay for Xbox and PC. Okay, so. Oh, that's a problem. MMOs really need that community part to be exciting, but obviously they're doing fine, so. part of this okay yeah it was like I said I don't I couldn't remember so really good trailer they got here I mean it's it's cool it's just it's a CG trailer though so it's just meant to create excitement I mean even like you know obviously I got a soft spot for Final Fantasy 14 so when they did the Shadowbringers trailer. They're not really showing the game, but that is very story heavy and they really are kind of playing into that. So I guess there's a really big hype going there. And this could be the same. I just don't have, you know, the uh, investment in it. We're beginning Avengers revealed today. Uh, let's see, it is now Monday? Yes. Square is at, I think, ooh, what time are they starting at? So, Square Enix's press conference starts at 9 p.m. Pacific time uh, or midnight uh, Eastern time Tuesday morning. So, definitely excited for that. The empty horn has been sounded. Oh, yeah. Gondor calls for aid. Uh... Yeah, so Monday is Ubisoft and Square, and they're both uh, in the evening, so. And then I have Devolver to watch after this. Damn, it's like a Sony's normal slot. Sony didn't come this year, though, so. 
to be continued. And then Tuesday's Nintendo. So, and that'll be at noon. That's right, another cliffhanger. Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. You may have recognized the return of Sai Sahan, the legendary Red Guard Swordmaster. Yeah, see, there's there's a bunch of lore stuff happening there, and it's just going over my head, which. If you're into the game, I'm sure it's super exciting. Just the same way, I hope not Midnight Tuesday. Well, it would be Monday to Tuesday, to the beginning of Tuesday. So it'd be, well, 24 hours from now for East Coast time. We've got a lot more to share about the return of Sai and the Dragon Guard, which will unveil at QuakeCon later this summer. Before then, keep an eye out for a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker, which you'll see in August. Man, they always got like that one guy. Thank you. Muzzle that so guy, man. Jesus. For the Elder Scrolls Online. We're humbled by your enthusiasm. Your enthusiasm for the game motivates us every day. You guys are seriously awesome. Thank you. Hey, uh... Yeah, I should probably try the game again. They pay him well. The screaming guy? Oh, he's there every year. Probably just pay him in beer. I mean, I'd go scream for some beer. The only game in development at Zenimax Online Studios. We have several other projects, one of which we're ready to reveal tonight. And to tell us all about it is the game's creative director, Kira Schlitt. Drank the over happy. <laughs> over hype one guy. Depends on the beer. I don't know, because you could be screaming because you enjoy it, or you could be screaming out of just pure disappointment. So I, I, th I don't know if it does depend on the beer. And now, for something completely different. Imagine a classic Saturday morning cartoon in free-to-play mobile game form. Let's take a look. Oh, buzzkill. But they're really trying to get like that mobile money. This is a new cartoon for mobile users. Get your anus to Mars. Sick theme. Yeah, that was cool looking in that regard. I don't want to play another phone game, though. So, there's a new branch on Commander Keen's family tree, and they're heading to iOS and Android. If you're hearing about Commander Keen for the first time, it was one of the first PC action games created by id Software in the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it starred boy genius Billy Blaze. Don't you all have phones? Man. All of us at Zenimax Just let the meme die. We want to give a really big thanks to our friends at id for trusting us to deliver our modern take on this classic game. <laughs> 1 a.m. BST is going to release worldwide, so in 11 hours. So, tonight, as we introduce Commander Keen to a new yeah, generation I, of players, man. we're also introducing the new I am definitely hyped for Squares, but, I mean, they told us Final Fantasy is going to be there, Billy. so... I also have seen a lot of polls online and people really look forward to both the Marvel uh, Avengers game and Final Fantasy. So Square is going to have an audience. The twins build wacky gadgets from household items to save the earth from certain alien destruction. Drag and drop gadgets to summon allies, attack enemies. I'm trying really hard not to check out right now choose from a caboodle of contraptions to conquer challenges and try saying that five times fast the twins go on adventures in story mode which tells some of the classic commander keen tales as well as a whole bunch of brand new ones in story mode you'll overcome aliens collect power ups, mm -hmm. and explore mars and beyond you can also go helmet this do anything for you guys you excited you hype you hype for the keen 
landscape where you need to control checkpoints and claim the flag. I'm so ready for the audience reaction to Avengers. Everyone's probably going to scream. Commander Keen. Yeah, I, man. Crystal Dynamic really has to knock that out of the park. Because they have not, they haven't, like, really talked or shown anything about it. And they're just going to be showing it to us that, you know, on a big old stage with a lot of eyes on them. I like her. I'd like her to just ka <laughs> caboodle off the stage. Truth. I'm keen to see what's next. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, the mobile game's done. Sweet. Thank you, Kira. Yeah, I'm not thanking you. We, like you, love mobile games. In addition to Blades and the upcoming Commander Keen, millions Did you hear what he just said? Fallout Shelter, which has now reached over 150 million downloads and counting. For fans of collectible card games, we brought the Elder Scrolls Legends to mobile so you could experience the Elder Scrolls in a new way. This year, the Legends I like how the beginning of this conference too was talking about how it's about the the customer and then us and all that stuff and then there's like mobile game mobile game mobile game Yeah. So back to the, the square conversation. <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, I'm super looking forward to that. I, they, I don't, I can't remember the last time they actually attended E3, uh, with a stage presence. So they obviously are feeling very confident, uh, if they're going to spend the money to be on stage at E3. Uh, super cool. Some people are saying the Avengers game could drop like this October or March 2020, but October because the trailer was like two years ago, Spider-Man was the same. Uh, possibly, though it is different teams working on them, obviously. Uh, I would really hate for them to release October because this winter is, or holiday season, I should say, is super busy already. Avengers game has a high bar to reach for me. Yeah, well, you know, Disney, I'm sure, is going to be a little fussy about how it's made as well, so um, that doesn't mean it's going to be good. I want it to be good, and that's a good company working on the game, so I'm sure it will be. Definitely, definitely look forward to it. Final Fantasy VII, obviously, looking forward to that. Uh, I really hope they show up some like new IPs because Square is finally like coming back as a company. Uh, and the fan service stuff's really cool and all, but I would love to see them start getting, uh, what word do I want? Taking risks again. See? Dragons! <laughs> if you enjoy other card games but are looking for something that provides a little deeper challenge, you can download Legends for free on the App Store and begin playing tonight. Are you going to be live for Avengers release? If yes, I'm going to sub to you and wait until you make stream. Um, I am doing every E3 press conference, so yeah, I will be doing Square Enix. Um, it will be pretty late because I am going to wait until after they do the live so I can watch the whole thing in case I need to pause or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I will definitely be doing it. And then... Uh, <coughs> Yeah, I, I'm being like I said. I'm gonna do all of them. I did uh, EA and Xbox already as well. If you want to check those out, so. Uh, not Disney that has me worried. Large resemblance to Ultimate Alliance games. I mean, we'll see. Chris is gonna go make a sandwich. You are always making sandwiches. And Psycho wants one too. All right. Ooh. Let's see what they got for Rage. They really like the retro aesthetic for their advertising. Wow. Got that, uh, what that sitcom vibe going.
I watched Seth play this a little bit. The uh, <sighs> the combat looked really fun. I just he told me the the beginning is a little slow. I I imagine there's a leak for the Avengers game in a few hours. I really hope not. Uh, I I love being surprised uh, with E3. That's part of the the fun of, of watching it. The leaks kind of ruin that. So I, it's fun to get the information, but I like the official presentation. So. Glad they're supporting this game. There are steps to get in the Sammy. Never mind. New story, new enemy faction. New areas. Very cool. I, you know, the game hasn't even been out that long. They're already talking about this extra stuff. That's very cool. Ooh, Wolfenstein. I'm looking forward to this one. Hello, everyone. Hi. After liberating America from the Nazi scum in Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Hmm. This year, we take you back to Europe with two new Wolfenstein games. First, we are bringing Nazi killing Kinda. into virtual reality with... Is they got a couple projects going? With Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot. I can't remember the, the name of it now, but it's... Uh, the they got a co-op uh, Wolfenstein sequel coming out. Looks really cool. Hopefully they show some more of it. I wonder if Seth will get a chance to play it. I don't know how much time they get to to wander around the floor. If you haven't fought Nazis in VR, you don't know what you are missing. But, as I said, we have two new Wolfenstein games. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. summer, we are going to be launching Wolfenstein Youngblood. There it is. Yep. With a gameplay experience that is bigger than any previous Wolfenstein game. Yeah, yeah. We will have more weapons and weapon upgrades than ever before, more ways to customize your playstyle, and, of course, even more evil Nazis to kill. <laughs> and in Youngblood, you can kill those Nazis with a friend. Yeah. Co-op. Yes, Wolfenstein is going co-op. Youngblood is set in the 1980s. That's going to be awesome. Two decades after the new Colossus. BJ Blazkowicz is missing in Nazi-occupied Paris. And it's up to his twin daughters, Jess and Soph, to track him down. In Youngblood, you can still play by yourself, or you can partner with a pal to double up on shooting, stabbing, and killing Nazis. <laughs> a lot of emphasizing. Check it out. Paris. Nazi country. That's where Papa is, so that's where we're going. We can find him together. I may have an assignment suitable for two Nazi killers such as yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ew. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs>
I'm digging the way they did the trailer. Showing off the co-op, showing full screen so you can see all the details. Showing off animations. Boom. The music is very cool. 100%. That. Ooh, that's so soon. Nice, 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 nice. Wolfenstein Young Blood releases on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. And wow, it looks great. Yeah, no, it looks awesome. On July 26. Uh, and if you can't and play, not a long wait. To play this week. Thank you. No, no, thank you. That was awesome. And now, I'd like to welcome to the stage my dear friends from Arcane Leon, who worked with us on these two Wolfenstein games, Dinga and Sebastian. We love you too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dinga Bakaba, <laughs> game director at the God. Bonsoir, I'm Sebastian Miton, art director in the same studio. <laughs> so, along with partnering with our good friends at Machine Games on Wolfenstein, we've been working on other projects at Arcane Lyon. And tonight, my boy Dinga. We're excited to announce our latest first person action game. It's something innovative, stylish, and different from anything we've done before. Let me begin by saying bienvenue to the frozen island of Black Reef. This is a place of mystery where our looks can kill. The game takes place during what we say in French is a period of folie, a time of madness. And now that we've given you a small taste of the world, let us introduce you to our two deadly rivals, Colt and Juliana. This place isn't a paradise. It's a prison. Out here, Out here we're trapped. We're free. In this endless, eternal cycle. No way to run to, baby. <laughs> That's a long way for Psycho to get a sandwich. go to sleep early if the trailer doesn't drop on midnight <clears throat> yeah the show I don't know if it'll be at the beginning of the show or not um, who knows the order they're gonna do it in but yeah their the show will probably be if I'm gonna get if I'm gonna guess about an hour and a half long seems about normal so uh, you can always wait as well for a pre-recorded version and just kind of skip to it if you want Okay. CG trailer. We'll see. It's always. <clears throat> I get why they make them, but definitely the kind of person I want to see them playing the game, or at least actually see like full concept. I guess I don't know what I'm trying to say here on this. Anyway, like. That one is interesting. Because I'm so scared that Avengers is not going to be good, but I hope so much is going to be wonderful. 
I mean, I'm with you on that. It, it It's a big IP for them to get. It's a big responsibility. So everyone's going to be paying attention to it. They already have an Ultimate Alliance game coming out. It's coming out on Switch. It's a wonderful way to get away from all the pressures in life. I think the sense of community has really helped me as a person because I'm typically very isolated. It's definitely very confidence building. They're back. It brought me out of my shell and stopped being an introvert. I could like be a hero and do all these things. You find really creative, really fun, really talented people meet people who are in my group that i've only known as a character probably made more friends online than i have in real life the games that you um bring out just helps people honestly my parents were refugees from the vietnam war which is why i'm also fascinated by elements of i'm trying to think crystal dynamics make anything outside of tomb raider in a while i don't think they have stress i was in a dark place <laughs> for a while I told myself I wasn't going to be there anymore. Oh, there's downtime. Psycho's talking about Brave Exodus. Just being someone cannot wait to go to the city and buy this game. I mean Avengers. Oh yeah. It's really nice to see that there's Yeah, no, I yeah. Definitely probably my most anticipated conference is Squares, so. Though uh, I don't know if you watched Microsoft's or not though. They uh they had a really good show. They showed up a lot of stuff. Obviously, not all of it is just Xbox. A lot of it is cross-platform stuff. So, they have a costume record to tell these people have it all. Uh, you know, they might have just invited uh, people and told them it was a, a cosplay convention, and and then they tricked them, made them, interviewed them instead. I'm most hyped for Final Fantasy VII. Um, I've been, I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy uh, in general, and then. Seven was one of my big titles on PlayStation One when I uh, first was introduced to the system. That and Resident Evil One. Um, I am excited for the Avengers game. Obviously, I want to see what it's going to be because we just have like so little information on that. Um, I'm excited for them to show off something new. Hopefully, I would love to see Square. Uh, I know they have a project in the works because they uh, during a oh, what's it called a uh, when they talked to the, the shareholders and stuff like that, um, they talked about a new IP and, and adjusting resources to start working on it. So uh, a couple things there, and I'm, I'm really excited for that because Square had a really hard time, especially during like 2008, 2009, the, and a lot of companies did, where the recession kind of hit and everyone started not being creative as much anymore, and that's why the indie game scene kind of blew up. And Square's bounced back recently uh, a lot, so... Very excited. Definitely play Avengers since I really like Ultimate Alliance, but please be different than Ultimate Alliance. Seven for sure, but I'm hoping they might talk about a new Final Fantasy IP. That I'm also looking forward to that. Uh, meatloaf on stage. We're getting a free concert. That's awesome. And of course, we are well known as developers of best in class engine technology. You know what? If it suits for the Avengers game, it's going to be like comics. I'm not going to buy this game if they say you're going to level up and get new suits. Innovation and creativity if the suits from the DNA. Avengers are going to be like and in the comics, I'm not going to buy this game. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what approach so they're, they're going to take. I imagine they'll probably take a lot of nods from the comics, though. Cutting-edge game engine-based technology we've developed specifically for game streaming. Now we'd like to introduce you to Orion. Hello, Orion. Orion is a tremendous breakthrough in streaming technology. It is our name for a group of patented <coughs> technologies. Hey man, everyone's got something like this going now. For performance in a cloud environment. Orion can work with any game engine and will I'll have to go back and rewatch it because I don't I, I we did it for the show but I don't remember it anymore I only really get these events like a couple times a year or so 
The exciting game streaming services you've been hearing so much about have largely focused on hardware solutions to address the complex challenges of streaming. There's a lot of words. <laughs> uh, we used our expertise in developing game engine software. More streaming stuff. Time for another sandwich. By incorporating is this is that going to be your boredom answer? Sandwiches. I hope you can get like the Iron Man suit from the Avengers Endgame or Infinity War. That'd be nuts. You know, I like that you and I imagine you played Spider Man. They did a really good job of just like giving a bunch of different options, and it would be awesome to see that uh, in Avengers as well. So, but uh, I mean, obviously we gotta wait and, and see what they're gonna say, but. More customization, the better. Try to appeal to um, as many different type fans of those heroes as possible. So it won't matter if your friends and family are sucking up all the bandwidth, or if you live far away from a data center. With Orion, you'll still be able to stream your game. Is it just me? Or is this kind of like the last company you expected to to do this? I mean, I guess they're all going to do this, but. <clears throat> now, as with any new computer technology, one, mass, one must ask the question, can it play Doom? Yeah! Good question. Can it stream an unrelenting, fluid, first-person shooter with native 4K resolution at 60 frames per second? Let's see. I'm so ready for the first person. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Specialist from Mid Software, who is showing you just that. Has it fast forward? Look at that guy's fingers. Guy. Maybe not. Those are painted fingernails. Who am I to judge? I don't know who the fuck that is. That's Doom at 60 frames per second without perceptible latency. And we want you all to experience this powerful streaming technology yourself as as we test and refine it. So for a chance to become the first in the world to stream Doom 2016. Man, they're all definitely gonna make that push to join the Doom Slayers Club by registering at slayersclub.com. It's a woman. It it can be whatever it wants to be. Everybody could use a little more Doom in their lives. Dude, why? And we'll see you in hell. A guy screaming in my ear. <clears throat> why are you here? assumption banned. Ah, here we go. What do you interfere with now? Yeah, yeah. So crispy. You will bring down the heavens wrath. It is written. Welcome back. Good timing. It Doom started. Time to give penance. <laughs> you are but one man. You should. At least the last one. That'll be a blast. You only played the original Doom? I mean, at least you played that one. I don't even think Chris played that. This is awesome. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I'm Marty Stratton, the executive producer of Doom Eternal. And I'm... Thank you. <laughs> and I'm 
Hugo Martin, the game's creative director. Yell at him too. There you go. As you just saw, we're not just. I think I'm gonna play some Spider-Man PS4 and watch your stream. Thank you very much. Nope, none of them. Damn it, Chris. Play Doom. That's definitely really what the last Doom brought was just fun, fun gameplay. Not even justifying that comment, Chris. Absolutely. Of course, the challenge in Doom is all about handcrafted combat, but also engaging level design. And in Doom Eternal, the game always has something Well, first off, thank you very much for the subscription. Very much appreciated. Uh, I'm actually co-host on this channel. Seth is the the uh, actual like owner and main host of the show. He's actually in LA right now for E3, so he'll have content for that coming out this week as well. As far as the donation thing goes, obviously super appreciated. We do not expect it at all. Um, we do this for fun. So, but very awesome for you to even think about it. So thank you so much. Marty Stratton, aka Marty McFly, in character, trying not to distort time and space. You are distracting me from doom. Bam! See, Chris. What? Why haven't you played this? Look at this. Look at this. I am disappoint. Not in Doom and Chris. Doom looks amazing. You know, it's, it's so I'm very good at that distracting business. That every <laughs> Fair. Has real meaning to you, the player. Every enemy is different. Every weapon has a purpose. And every decision you make really counts. The only path to victory. I don't know shooters. It's story based. Aggressively control the fight. And just adjust the difficulty so that you're not having to worry about that. If that's your concern, it's still just a fun game. We absolutely can't wait for you to play it. Some of you won't have to wait too long. If you are lucky enough to be in the room tonight. <laughs> You'll have a chance to play it immediately following the show. Yeah, yeah. They'll probably be on the floor. Man, so this could be like a kid in a candy store trying to figure out what the hell to to spend his allowance on, you know? But enough talk. Let's see how it all comes together. And watch as this perfect killing machine goes to work. Can I show some more? Awesome. Such a good looking game. It's a cool transition. Thing is, I just like to donate to people. I just want to donate you $110, but I gave $110 to a streamer. But I wish 
I knew you before him because you could have hundred ten dollars. <clears throat> I that's incredibly flattering. I gotta tell you. Um, and but like I said, it is one hundred percent not necessary. The fact that I mean you're flattering the hell out of me right now is more than enough. So thank you very much. Write the F now. <laughs> oh, it said Mars. I don't think we... This is Mars. Hell on Mars. Boom. Yeah, when you're getting your butt kicked, you do executions, they drop health. You keep just massacring everything. That's why we haven't colonized Mars yet. Yeah, we don't have Doom Guy yet. Mars is full of demons. You'd figure our little uh, drone buddy up there would have seen him by now. Man, so good. He has been corrupted. He lies to us. <laughs> Here, eat yourself. <laughs> that was nice and slow. Okay. Some people try to give Bill Gates like fucking 20 thousand dollars check it's like splitting in the ocean or spitting in the ocean can't read apparently yeah now he he's fine he's fine I'm sure he appreciates it regardless but that looked awesome more metal playing on his adventures <clears throat> Thanks. Come on, guys. We're so excited there you go. Because the gameplay that you just saw is just a piece of what you're going to play this week at E3. Yeah. Very cool. But I bet a lot of you are wondering when do we get to play Doom Eternal at our home? Well, at our home? You don't have to wait too much longer. Not quite tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the Doom Eternal will release on November 22nd. Armatures. Holiday season. Man. How's my day been? I Very busy. I went to a uh, birthday party that, with uh, the really missus, and then I came home and relaxed for a little bit, and then I did the Xbox stream. Now I'm doing the Bethesda stream, and then after this, I have to do Devolver Digital. And then, yeah, do more tomorrow. So, but it's been good. You? This guy's, this guy's already got it. That's right. Already Stealing helmets. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got one more thing we know that you've been waiting to hear about. Our totally new Doom multiplayer experience. We call it battle mode. We've been developing this in-house at id, and that it's unlike anything you've ever seen. Text looks before. Yeah. We like uh Oh god. What was that game by uh but with your friends. 
Gearbox. Battle, 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 battle. Help me out here. Shabbat Shabbat Shabbat. You're working normal schedule. When I come home, I am swing shift, baby. But I don't sleep, so I'll, I'm sure I'll see you. Uh, you know I'm alright, rainy all weekend. We actually didn't get rain? Kind of weird. I just woke up like two hours ago. It's been great literally watching your stream and playing games. Man, yeah, that sounds great. I, uh, I didn't get to play anything all weekend. That's alright. E3. Got a job to do. Show it to me. On behalf of our amazing team at Id in Dallas and Frankfurt, Germany, we want to thank you all so much for your support. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for making a good game. I know. I hate it. I was hoping to get Borderlands time in with you. <clears throat> yeah, I still got to play that for the show. Though, uh, they announced that the Xbox One... Our conference that there's a DLC coming out for Borderlands 2, which is crazy. This looks cool. Not really the biggest competitive gameplay person, but I'm sure it'd be a blast to watch people play. Mortal Kombat voice guy there, or what? Reminds me of Dead by Daylight. Another round of applause, please, for Marty Hugo and all of our presenters tonight. At least it's not a battle royal yet. <laughs> no, hopefully they don't. Uh, at least make a separate game if they're going to do that. Great games you've seen tonight. We say thank you. 2019 marks 25 Doom guy for Doom. Mortal Kombat 11. We will be going all out with Doom at QuakeCon this summer. We're adding a whole host of panels and activities dedicated to Doom, which we call DoomCon. <laughs> Chat, see what we did there? We took out the Quake and put Doom. We well, hope you can come hang out with us in Dallas. I think you're looking too into it. In London. If you can't Tune in online. Until then, go to Bethesda.net for more info on all the games you saw tonight. Not gonna do that. If you hear at E3 this week, we'll have hands on with many of our games. How many dollars would I give to see Avengers Taylor right now? Meantime, well, thanks for playing. Oh, thanks for see, I am actually really patient. So have a great night. Uh, the the idea of saving money and knowing I'll see you tomorrow, I think I'm okay with. But if we're playing hypothetical God, I don't know. That's a hard one for me. I, 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 At Bethesda, we're in the business of creating heroes. The Borderlands 2 DLC is free till July 9, so it's out right now. Good to know. It's like we hand you this malleable clay, and you do these extraordinary. I don't know. That we never could have imagined. What's your answer to that question? We get to build these worlds and these communities, and you all come in and you play, and you. I never look too into anything. Says the guy who starts creating his own lore as soon as it is remotely tangible to do so. License slander. You know, I kinda know you. I'd give them Tree Fitty to see it now. Psycho's throwing figures out. Looks like we're winding down the show, so my question for when it's over, so you guys have time to type it out to me. Takeaways from the show, high moments, low moments. 
And that's the end. All right. Thoughts. Personally, uh, I thought they had a decent second half of their show when they weren't talking about mobile games and stuff they already announced last year that they're doing damage control on. Of course, all the id stuff was very cool, and Doom looks awesome. Though, I gotta say, I am most excited for Wolfenstein because of the co-op nature of it. Uh, it was a good showing overall. Low moments, mobile games out the ass. Yeah, they are they are pushing the mobile market. I don't... I get it, money-wise, but uh, I would argue most of us aren't clamoring for that. Who knows? High moment, Japanese Ghostbusters. That was cool. It was a nice surprise. Uh, though, I hate that you're calling it Ghostbusters. <laughs> Very low moments with the mobiles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really wish they wouldn't have done that. You'll like, and obviously I have to hold my opinion too much until we do our uh, E3 after show when Seth gets back from Los Angeles. But uh, for you guys, where does this... Obviously I'm assuming Microsoft's probably higher than, than this one, but EA, Bethesda, where you at? Be interested to hear that. Just tired of seam companies do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, well, you know, they'll stop doing it when they stop making money. So tell people to quit supporting it. You didn't see the Microsoft one. I know you were playing Overwatch. So I blame Keith. High moments: Doom, Ghostwire, Wolfenstein. Agreed. Very awesome. Definitely want to see more on Ghostwire. The the theme was just awesome. And then yeah, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein. Soon. Don't know EA was meh. Wow you what, you didn't like six games in three hours? I just did two shows today in the same amount of time crazy all right so I'm assuming then for you psycho EA is at the bottom still Volta FIFA hype are you being facetious if not that's cool I'm just curious Witchcraft? What do you mean witchcraft? <clears throat> Sorcerer, MS, and MS. Big games. Big show. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're the only big player, really. They're, the rest of them are all game uh, studios, so... Microsoft is a console slash publisher slash game studio slash we just buy whatever the hell we need to. So they uh, they have a lot usually to talk about. Though I uh, I was surprised to see Bethesda start talking about their own streaming platform. I shouldn't be surprised, but I was surprised to see it. I know EA talked about it last year uh, for them, and then uh, half expect Ubisoft if I. Did they talk about it last year? I can't remember, but I have expect them to come out and talk about a streaming service as well. I'm pretty sure there was like a copyright uh, leak somewhere on that. So, uh, yeah, other than that, I'm sure they're all going to do it because proprietary, proprietary, proprietary. I wish they had shown something, anything on New Elder Scrolls IP. Yeah, you and everyone else, I'm sure, would have liked that, but Microsoft has it solely because of cyberpunk um uh, oh for top spot yeah, yeah i hear you i thought you meant the show i was like no they'd have done it regardless uh yeah no cyberpunk was awesome for sure and we got a release date which <clears throat> is great uh honestly was just kind of expecting them to one day be like okay the game's finally done you can buy it now because they're really against like 
rushing to get their stuff done, but they must feel confident if they have actually a date out there now. Okay, well, I have to do Devolver Digital still. Uh, I'm going to take a intermission in between streams here. Uh, in my opinion, others ha may have their own opinions. No, I, I, I agree. So Cyberpunk pretty much uh, was the most exciting thing I've seen so far out of E3. So, But same thing happened last year. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wind this down. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit for Devolver if you guys want to come back and watch that with me as well. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Friendly reminder to play Borderlands, The Handsome Collection, and Sonic Mania offered for free on PlayStation Plus. Come back at the end of the month have a conversation with us. you make me wait again. You're pulling a Seth. I'm going to keep going. You got something to say? I'll respond to it at the end of my outro. And come back at the end of the month to have a conversation with us on those games. And our game of the month picked by Chris is Path of Exile. That is free on all platforms. You can play that. Come back at the end of the month to talk to us about that as well. We have a Discord uh, link down below if you're on YouTube. Click on that. Come chat with us anytime, all the time. And we have iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast platforms for audio-only versions of most of our shows. My name is Chevy. Thanks for watching. And I will be back for Devolver today and later in the week for the rest of the E3 press conferences. Until then, see you guys.